Hi, I'm Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics, where you can learn math on your own at home. Today I am starting a brand new series where I will cover all the algebra standards in 10 minutes a day for 10 days. I hope you all find this series helpful and if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments down below. I do answer questions daily over on my TikTok. It's the same as on here, Homemade Mathematics. Um, but I will leave the link for that down below in the description box. So if you want to follow me over there as well, go ahead and follow that link. Also, if you're looking for just a quick video over one of the algebra concepts, I've actually put together a Algebra 1 TikTok curriculum where I have a 60 second video for every single algebra concept. Um, and they're all just listed um, in a document with links to each video. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, I will leave the link for that down in the description box below as well. If you're not already, please make sure you subscribe to me here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos and to help support my channel. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with day one. To start off our algebra series, we're going to start by talking about algebraic expressions. So we're going to go over what they are, how to simplify them, and then end with how to add and subtract them. So an algebraic expression is an expression made up of numbers, variables, and operations. Right? This does not have an equal sign. That is an equation, which we will get to in the future here. But today we're just talking about expressions, so no equal signs. So here's a couple of examples we're going to go over. And what we're going to do with these is we cannot solve them, right? They're not equations. We don't know what they equal. But we can simplify them, all right? And we can simplify them by combining like terms. I do have a full 10-minute video just on how to combine like terms, so I will go ahead and link that if you would like to see more examples. But starting with our first example here, to simplify, you can only put together things that look the same. So for example, 3x, I cannot combine that with 5 or negative 1 because they don't have x's, right? So I can combine my 3x and 2x, add up the numbers to get 5x, and then I can combine my constants, a positive 5 and a negative 1, to get positive 4. Now notice I cannot combine 5x or 4 together, so that is my simplified version. Moving on to my second example, um, I cannot combine that x squared and that x. Those are not the same thing. I can combine my negative 3x and my positive 2x. Negative 3 plus 2 gets me negative 1x, or we should know that means just the same thing as negative x. Um, and then my x squared does not have any other x squareds to combine with, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And my constant, my plus 4, also has nothing to combine with, so I'm going to leave it as is. And then in my third example, I also have three different terms, right? I have my x, I have my y, and then I have my constant. So starting with my x's, 5x plus x, that's like a plus 1x, imaginary 1's in front there. So those combined would be 6x. Then we have a negative 2y and a positive 7y. So negative 2 plus 7 is going to get us a positive 5. So notice I put plus 5, and then that thing that they share that makes them like terms is y. And then lastly, my constant doesn't have anything to combine with, so I'm just going to copy it down below. Notice with all of these, I do not know what the value of x is. I've just simplified them. Moving on to adding and subtracting algebraic expressions, when we're adding, it's really like what we were just doing, right? Let's combine our like terms. We can't add things that are not like terms, right? I can't combine that 4 and 2n to the third. They're not like terms. I can combine my 2n to the third and my 5n to the third. Add those up. 2 plus 5 gets us 7n to the third. And then moving on to my constants, we have a positive 4 and a positive 2 combine those to get a positive 6. Do not forget that operation in between our terms. It can't just be 7n to the third 6. You've got to have that plus 6 in there. Moving on to number 2. Looks a little more complicated because we have a couple more terms. Um, but starting with that negative 4k to the 4th, you always want to start with your largest exponent. So k to the 4th, you can see, is our largest exponent here. And so negative 4 and a negative 3 are going to combine to get negative 7 with their like term, which is k to the 4th. Then we're going to move on to our next highest 
which is squared, k squared. So we have a positive 3k squared and a negative 14k squared. So positive 3 minus 14 is going to get us a negative 11. So make sure the operation in between is negative or minus 11k squared because that is their like term that they share. And then we're ending with our constants, always ending with the constants. So we have a positive 14 minus 8 or plus a negative 8. So 14 minus 8 is going to get us a positive 6. So then our last term is going to be plus 6. Notice none of these are like terms, so I cannot simplify it any further. That is my answer. Moving on to subtraction, it's a little more complicated, but not really. We're going to just turn these into adding problems so we can do them exactly like we just did those last ones. And we can do that by adding the opposite. So if you turn that minus into a plus, you have to turn the signs of all the terms following it. Okay, so if I turn that into a plus, I have two things following it. I have 3n to the third, and that's a positive 3n to the third. That's got to become negative. And I have a positive 4n. That also has to become negative. If it was negative, it would become positive. All right, then from here, we just do it exactly like how we did those last two. We combine our like terms. So we have a negative 3n to the third plus a negative 3n to the third. So combining two negatives, you're gonna add those up. Negative three plus negative three is negative six. And then they're like term n to the third. Then moving on to my next term, we have 4n plus a negative 4n or 4n minus 4n. Right? Those are just going to cancel out, right? They're going to disappear. And that means I'm just left with negative 6n to the third. That's my answer. All right, and then my last example here, we are going to add the opposite. So I'm going to turn that into an addition, and then my negatives become positives, right? If they're negative, they become positive. If they're positive, they become negative. So now I've got a bunch of positives here, and we're gonna combine our like terms starting with our largest exponent. So n to the fifth, and it's a negative six n to the fifth, and then you look down and we find another n to the fifth, a positive 8n to the fifth. So negative 6 plus 8 is going to give us a positive 2 and their like term n to the fifth. Then move on to our next highest exponent, which would be n to the fourth. And we have negative 8n to the fourth and we have a positive 6n to the fourth. So negative 8 plus 6 is going to give us a negative 2. So make sure you put your minus sign in there and then their like term was n to the fourth. Um, all right, let's see what we're left with. We're left with a constant of three, and we're also left with three n. We cannot combine those, right? One has a variable, one is just a constant. So since they don't have anything to combine with, we're just going to leave them. All right, we're gonna bring that positive three n. Remember when we turn that minus to a positive, it also turned that negative to a positive. So we have plus 3n, and then that 3 in front is also positive, so that would be plus 3. All right, you'll see here I cannot combine any more. That's as simplified as it can be, so that would be my final answer. 2n to the 5th minus 2n to the 4th plus 3n plus 3. So like I said at the beginning of this video, these are algebraic expressions. We cannot solve them. Those would be algebraic equations which in our next video, we're gonna be talking about the differences between expressions and equations. We're going to look at how to multiply expressions, right? We did add and subtract today. Next time we're gonna look at multiplying and then we're gonna look at evaluating equations because that's basically just working out an algebraic expression if you know what the value of X or your variable is. If you have any math questions at all, please comment those down below. Remember, I do answer those daily over on my TikTok, so go follow me over there, and I can help you out with maybe a homework question that you're stuck on. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any future videos from me. See you next time.